Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, the shining gem of the night sky for anyone who's bored enough to gaze at it through a telescope. For centuries, it has captured our imaginations, mainly because it's colossal, swirling, and looks just interesting enough to distract us from our mundane, earthly existence. But imagine, brace yourselves, Jupiter got bored with its life of aimless planethood and decided to upgrade its status to that of a glorious, if somewhat diminutive, red dwarf star. In the next oh-so-fascinating portion of this documentary, we'll explore the wildly improbable conditions required for Jupiter to light up its very own starlight, examine how that might brutally rearrange the entire solar system, and then wring our hands in despair over what it could mean for our precious Earth. To transform Jupiter from a big blustery planet into a shining, albeit puny, red dwarf, we only need to do one itty-bitty thing increase its mass by about 80 times. It's not like that's a substantial jump or anything, right? Just gather up 79 more Jupiters, smush them all together, and voila, hydrogen fusion can begin. Easy peasy. And why do we need so much mass? Because to ignite hydrogen fusion at the core, to become a real star, not some pathetic substellar object, Jupiter needs to cross the magic threshold of about 0.08 solar masses. Right now, Jupiter is a wimpy 0.001 solar masses, or about 318 Earth masses. Yes, how puny, how truly puny. Of course, all the raw materials for this mass addition no longer exist in convenient cosmic form. The sun gobbled up most of that primeval gas eons ago, and the rest ended up as the planets and leftover debris. But hey, let's not let pesky reality get in the way of a fun hypothetical, shall we? Let's pretend we discover a random galactic garage sale featuring exactly 79 Jupiters worth of hydrogen, helium, and cosmic sprinkles. Then we cunningly pilot them over. Problem solved. No biggie. Once we've done the impossible and poof, transform Jupiter into a red dwarf, what changes exactly? Why, everything, of course. Brace yourselves. Congratulations, human race. Jupiter's now a glorious M-type red dwarf, or maybe an L-type if you like dimmer, cooler stars. The radius? You might expect it to be gargantuan, like it's half the size of the sun or something. Nope. Red dwarfs are shockingly compact. Even though our new Jupiter has 80 times its old mass, it might only be, say, 20 or 30% larger in radius than it was before. Quite the anticlimax, right? Sure, it's about 80 times heavier, but red dwarfs are so dense and non-flashy that you'd still see something not much bigger in terms of overall diameter. But, hey, at least it's fusing hydrogen now, producing its own meager luminosity. Our dear mini-star might have a surface temperature anywhere from about 2,000 to 3,500 Kelvin, complete with a lovely dull red glow that reminds you of a half-dead ember in your barbecue grill. Impressive. Now, from Earth's perspective, this new star is definitely not going to outshine the sun. In fact, it might produce less than 1% of the luminosity of our beloved G2V star. So, don't expect two bright suns overhead like Tatooine. Instead, think of it as a really bright, ominous presence in the night sky, assuming Earth is even around to see it, which is a big assumption in this scenario. Now, let's talk about everyone's favorite cosmic pastime, gravitational chaos. By turning Jupiter into a star, we've increased its mass to a whooping 0.08 solar masses. So, we're basically forging a star system with two stars, the Sun at 1.0 solar masses and the new red dwarf Jupiter at 0.08. Think of it like a seesaw, with an adult and a toddler. Except the toddler is on steroids. There's just enough mass in that toddler that the seesaw might start doing backflips spontaneously. What does this mean for orbits? Well, the barycenter, the center of mass of the system, would likely shift outside the sun's surface. They dance around each other like an awkward cosmic waltz. Planets that used to revolve around a single, stable star with the occasional gravitational nudge from a puny Jupiter now have to deal with a second star that's not quite so puny anymore. Cue the fun scenario of orbits elongating, resonance after resonance collapsing, and entire planets possibly being flung to the cosmic curb. Some might think, oh, Earth can just settle into a stable orbit around either star. Yes maybe in a small fraction of hypothetical arrangements. 
but in many scenarios, Earth might be pitched out like an unwelcome party guest. Or maybe it'll wind up on a highly elliptical orbit that makes winter look like the ice ages on steroids and summer like a global meltdown. Now, before we keep unraveling our hypothetical cosmic meltdown, I've got to ask, what do you think, dear viewers? Would you risk turning Jupiter into a star if it meant all this orbital pandemonium? Would you even want a puny second sun, or is one headache enough? Make sure to drop your thoughts, realistic or wild, in the comments and spark a mini-debate down there. After all, what better place for cosmic speculation than an internet comment section? Now back to our regular programming, let's entertain the absurd notion that Earth escapes total orbital chaos. Even if Earth's orbit miraculously remains stable enough to avoid extreme elliptical shape changes, we still have a second star in the mix. Sure, it's only putting out a fraction of a fraction of the solar luminosity, but guess what? Red dwarfs can be surprisingly moody. They're known for robust magnetic fields and frequent stellar flares spitting out streams of ionizing radiation. Now, if Earth is shielded by its magnetic field and a thick atmosphere, assuming we haven't destroyed those ourselves by that point, these flares might simply be a nuisance, occasionally messing with satellites, radio communications, or gently toasting the ozone layer. Now, let's discuss how our fragile little ecosystems might respond. Migratory birds, nocturnal mammals, and certain moody humans might be a bit confused by two sources of light. Plants that rely on carefully timed photoperiods could find their rhythms thrown off. That's if we're being mild. If the gravitational arrangement wobbles Earth's orbit just enough, we could see entire climate zones shift. A tiny difference in Earth's orbit can trigger dramatic environmental changes, something we know from our own geological record. Throw in the possibility that Earth might tilt or precess differently, and you can kiss your coral reefs goodbye. Oh, wait, we're doing that anyway. For civilization, the chaos doesn't end there. Agriculture might become a fascinating new challenge as seasons morph unpredictably. I can only imagine the excitement among farmers when they say, oh, the next solar pass is in an extra elliptical portion of our orbit, so I guess the summer's going to be 20 degrees hotter, and oh, next year maybe it'll be 30 degrees cooler, or maybe we'll be flung out of the system entirely. Who knows? One thing is for sure, your local weather forecast is going to be a doozy. Of course, there's a small band of visionaries who might see this scenario as an opportunity for humanity to expand its territory. Perhaps we'd send out shining arcs of star bases, harness red dwarf Jupiter's unique spectral lines for exotic research, or colonize whichever newly warmed moon survive. Maybe we'd finally form a robust interplanetary civilization. That is, if we ignore the teensy problem that building sustainable habitats next to a flare-happy red dwarf might be the biggest headache since the invention of cable news. Now, rejoice in the knowledge that none of this is actually going to happen spontaneously. Jupiter is going to remain a plain old gas giant, and you can go to bed tonight rest assured that the only planet lighting up your sky tomorrow morning is good old Sol. Still, I do hope you enjoyed this little foray into hypothetical mayhem. If you fancy turning Jupiter into a red dwarf, maybe you should focus that energy on something more realistic like building a Dyson Sphere around the Sun, or colonizing distant planets that don't exist yet. Oh, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, because apparently that's the actual secret to unlocking the wonders of the universe.